Uh, we had a few something very exciting and inspiring. We're going to get rid of our sin and have a new life. That's what our verse is about this morning. It matches perfectly with the sermon. Jesus is the good news about victory. He defeated death. He conquered it and rose from the grave. Last week, we talked about that at Easter. This, this event happened after the resurrection, after Jesus died on the cross, was buried and resurrected. He, was, he met a number of people, and that's what this story is about this morning, is about meeting the disciples in the upper room and feasting with them. It says here, well first, let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, verse 41. And while they still did not believe, it became of joy and amazement. He said to them, do you have anything here to eat? He was hungry. He was human. After he had died and rose from the dead, and he met with his disciples and feasted with them and, and had fellowship, Jesus showed them his piercings in his hands and his side and his feet from the crucifixion. And they fellowship together and they the people were in amazement. They were in awe of Jesus. Go ahead. That he should have gone to heaven after he was resurrected, but he came here on earth to show us and to explain about the fulfillment. Then he's going home to heaven. Right now, in this scripture, he's, he's meeting with the disciples. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come here this morning for to hear your word and to think about it. I know we're so busy in our minds and all the activities that we've got going on. We pray that we can set those things aside and focus on you, Lord. And focus on our lives so that we can examine our own hearts and the mistakes and the sins that we have in our own lives. And we can ask for forgiveness. And it's by that forgiveness that we are received is through grace. We pray that we have an open mind, that we are serious about what we're doing here, and that we not be foolish with our lives. And we can have a miserable life, or we can have a joyful life, and we have a choice in that decision. God offers us so many choices for us to be able to make. We pray that we be committed to you, Lord, and to God. And pray during this hour that our hearts will be with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're looking at Luke chapter 24, verse 41. In Luke chapter... Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And it says, He said unto them, It says, They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. Now when he came together with the disciples, and they sat around and they watched him, they were in awe. Why? Because they knew that he had died and suffered. And the things that had happened to Jesus before he died. And they sat there and they wondered, you know, that he, he they knew he was buried in the tomb. And they know that knew that he had resurrected. And they were just in awe to see how Jesus was there among them, eating. And they witnessed the things that have happened. Now, it's very important this morning that we actually take the time and witness the things of God. 
and not getting caught up in the religious perspective of things. But to know the truth and understand that God is real. Christianity is real. We know that, that Jesus died and he was resurrected. And why did he come to the disciples? To show that he was, to witness, to show that he actually died and showed them proof of the, of the crucifixion. And it was Mary, Luke, John, Peter, they all came together. James, they all were there assembled together. And they witnessed It was not something that they invented, but it was something that was actually, that actually happened. It was important for them to witness and to see the things of Jesus and that how they wrote it in actual, in the Bible, in the Word. The disciples. It's the doctrine, it's the new doctrine of the word of God. It was a new word, it's a new faith. In some instances, you'll, get, you'll see where people get caught up in false teachings and false doctrine. We're talking about the new gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the new gospel. God. And it's the new word of God. The Bible speaks of being aware of false prophets. You know how the same as you'll see a sign on a gate or on a door that says, Beware of God. When you notice the sign, beware, you notice not you know not to go in or not to enter. Not to enter that gate. The same as the Bible says, beware of false prophets. In the New, New Testimony, it says there. It speaks of the fulfillment. Now, in verse 44, it says, he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Jesus was now talking to the disciples. He was discussing, have a conversation with the disciples. Here. He's letting them know, I'm here. And that they witnessed Jesus. He let them know that he's alive. Jesus oh, is alive. He showed the people. Alive. Jesus is alive. Oh, and people were thinking Jesus was gone. He was buried. Oh, and they opened the tomb. Where? And they looked and they were like, in amazement, where is Jesus? Yeah. They thought that somebody may have stole his body. I'll be here. And Jesus let them know, I'm here. Yeah. And they were in amazement. Yeah. You're oh. here. We, you died. We saw what they beat you and whipped you. And we saw the, the suffering you went through. And Jesus still let them know, I am here. It was important for them to know that they may write the doctrine. And it says that it is written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. Why? Because of me. The Bible, the Old Testament, it, spoke some, it speaks of Moses. Two, two years ago, there was a, a movie that was out. It was an old movie. It comes out before Easter, every year. It was, I think it was back in 1956 or 57. It's a story about, it's talked about the 10 plagues. This movie is the 10 commandments. Remember Pharaoh? His heart was hardened. He would not let the people become free. 
he refused to allow them to become free. He just was stubborn. And then it, after his firstborn son died, that's when his heart was open and he allowed the people to go free. And you remember when the Red Sea opened? The story, I love this story. I remember as a child, uh, six or seven, seven or eight years old, my mother watched it. The Ten Commandments. And it was very important. The Ten Commandments, very important. Because one, one of God's commandments say, speak of lying. And why is that important? That is a sin. It also speaks of adultery. And it speaks of do not worship false idol, false gods, idols. It says honor your mother and father. You must honor your parents. Some people think they don't like it. You know, I know you don't like what your parents are saying, but you must obey your parents. You know, a lot of people want to remove the Ten Commandments from the, from the courthouse. A lot of people don't believe in the Ten Commandments, and they want to have it removed. They really push to remove the commandments and to remove anything that has to do with the Lord, with God. You know, it also speaks of not speaking the Lord's name in vain. You know, sometimes you say, oh my God, oh my God. And you know, sometimes people use profanity, use the word D before God. You must honor God. Amen. A lot of people, they just like to use obscenities and, and play with the word. Most people are very obscene when it comes to God. You must understand that the ten, what the Ten Commandments say. You must not use the word of God in vain. You must remind people. That is very important. And I thank God for reminding me. Now it speaks of the fulfillment of the law of Moses in the word of God. And the prophets. The Messiah. And it speaks of him coming soon and that he will fulfill the word of God. It says the Lord of it says the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. Now in verse 45, it says, Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them. Now the now he was the the, the disciples were with Jesus for for three years and he taught them and he taught them the, about the Old Testament and the laws of Moses and that they must follow the law and when Jesus died they were confused they didn't understand and then when Jesus was resurrected and came to them and showed them the evidence. It says, then they could understand the scriptures. They read the Old Testament, New Testament together. And that's what you're supposed to do. It's very important that you have a full understanding of the Word of God. And that you know the whole, the full word of God and it will convict you in your heart. Without the word of God, there is no conviction. Without the word of God, conviction is gone. It's like your flesh taking full control of you. I decide. I have a question for you. 
What is the biggest enemy in your life? Oh, and the devil? Any others? It's three. Yourself, right, right. The same, yeah, yourself. Any others? The devil, myself, the flesh, that means the flesh. One more. Anybody? Money, that's true, that's true, that's true, but one other. The world, the world, the world's influence, the things that you see, the world, all of these things that influence you. Pay attention now. The world, it's the world. That's your enemy. Oh, The biggest enemy is yourself. Myself, the flesh. I'm speaking of the flesh. You know, the different obscenities, having a dirty mind, your sins. You must fight. You must fight against that enemy. You must push away from the enemy. Now, sometimes you say, I, I can't help myself with drinking and smoking. I can't help myself with cursing and drugs and all the different obscenities in my life. I can't, I can't help that. Yes, you can. You must quit. Amen. I can't help myself. What am I supposed to do? You know, I have a bad habit of lying and all of these different things. You can stop lying. You can stop cursing. You can stop being having a proud and being bullied and prideful. You can stop. How do you change? You must humble yourself before the Lord. Amen. Amen. I know that you have struggles in your life, and I know that that happens to you, but you can. You can stop drinking. You can fight the things that are going on in your life. How can you do it? Through Jesus Christ. The enemy of the flesh, the devil, and the world, you can conquer. Now, the disciples, they got an understanding of the word of God. Here in verse 46 it says, He told them, this is written, that Christ will suffer and rise, and rise from the dead on the third day, and reopen, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was written by who? It was written in the word of God by James, Luke, John. And the disciples, many of the disciples wrote the, word, the New Testament. There were four Gospels in the New Testament. And some people try to add to the Word of God, but that is considered false doctrine. But here in the Word of God, we see that it is that there was a witness of Jesus. Amen? A lot of people have doubt within them of what the word of God says, but it says here in verse 47, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. Why did Jesus show the people? Why do we preach the word of Jesus Christ? It shows the death, burial, and resurrection of, of Jesus. It wasn't a top secret. Thank God it wasn't a mystery or top secret that we have to hush and not let anybody know about. But the word of God shows the evidence of Jesus Christ. Amen? And I thank God that he saved me. And I'm not saying you have to hope and, and wonder and doubt. Once I accept Jesus Christ and become saved, I receive joy. It says here in the Word. 
It's interesting. You are witnessing all these things, and I'm going to send you, and I'm going to send what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Oh, it doesn't matter if yeah. he's speaking to the Jews, he's speaking to all yeah. people, yeah. everyone in the world. He doesn't just pick specific people to tell things to. He doesn't pick a specific people to actually allow them to receive the gospel and deny other people of receiving Jesus Christ. Only the people in Israel. Only. But the whole world. What? What? To every kind of race, it doesn't matter what race or creed. White, black, red, Spanish, Puerto Ricans, all nations. And to the deaf, also. God doesn't sit and look at deaf people and think, oh no. Hearing people are more important. They're not worthy of the gospel. Oh. But he's preached to the all nations. <laughs> to educational people only? No. Where? It doesn't Where? matter if you're deaf, blind, <laughs> to all Where? Where? Oh. That word, oh. specific, all, oh. all. Oh. Oh. Hey. Amen. No. God. Now God, God doesn't have a favorite person that he just picks, just specific people. No. The Bible says to all nations to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations of the world. Amen. That is exciting. Wow. Now it's important here in verse 48 it says, Oh, you are witness. Witnesses of these things. He's telling this to the disciples, to all people. Now you are witness of all things. Remember, I showed you in three years, I preached and taught about everything. And they're like, yes, 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 everything. So you must write because you are a witness. And that is important. That's important. Now, in verse 49, it says, I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. We talk about Jesus explaining to the disciples, and and they are receiving what he is saying, and he's talking about the fulfillment of the gospels, the, the laws of Moses. And Jesus himself was talking about the fulfillment that he did. And telling them to go out to all nations and, uh, and preach the gospel. And told them that you are a witness, you are witnesses of all of those things. And the disciples were receiving everything that he said. And I was there, I'm just imagining Jesus giving them the big thumbs up, thumbs up. And as he ascended into heaven to be with the Lord, they were in awe. Go, God. Go on. And what happened? They told he admonished them to go Amen. and speak the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations. Amen. Amen. 
He told them, I am going to send you. He told them to stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Oh, power. Dear. We know that Jesus was the fulfillment of the word of God. He fulfilled the word, the promise that God has sent to all of us. And, and do we think that everything is going to be perfect? That we would never make any mistakes? No, but we know that Jesus did it. Now let's look at verse 53. The last verse, it says, And they stay continually at the temple, praising mm -hmm. God. So they were just praising God. They were blessing God. His holy name. Before I close. You have a choice in life. Joy or a miserable life. Filled with sorrow and anger. It's your choice. It's the choice that you make. Don't blame God. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Don't blame the church. Or your school. You know, sometimes people get upset. I blame the church. Go away. Don't blame God. Jump yourself, God. mine, Deep. myself. We have Point. a decision Point. to make. Point. Pointing Point. and blaming and for the mistakes that I made in my life. Blaming. We must decide. Make a decision for our lives. Amen.